All right, let's take a look at a question that involves a normal curve and labeling this normal curve using the 68-95-97 rule. Um, this is something you're going to have to remember. Um, it's, it's one of the things that you'll need to memorize to, uh, to be able to do it on the test, say if you had to label a normal curve on the test. Um, you want to make sure that you have this memorized. So we'll go through the steps of labeling a normal curve using some information that's given to us and then use that to answer some questions. Once we've got it all labeled, we should be able to figure out what we need to get the answers here. Um, these are coming, I think, from chapter uh, they're 12.4 and these numbers are coming from the 23 to 32 section in the homework on 12.4. So if you're wondering where I pulled this, that's where it's coming from. So we have here a set of data. This happens to be the uh, IQ test scores. And we're told that the mean is 100 and that the standard deviation is 16. And we want to use this 68, 99.7 rule to label this normal curve with three standard deviations from the mean in both directions. So the mean, remember, is the one that kind of falls right in the middle of the curve. So we'll go ahead and do a line here. And we're told that the mean in this case is 100. And we need three standard deviations on either side. So I'm going to put one here, one here, and one here. This doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to space it perfectly. Try and get them fairly even. But those are my three standard deviations from the mean. Now what they're saying here is that my standard deviation is 16. So what we need to do is use our calculator and start adding. We have the mean, that's 100. The first standard deviation from the mean is just going to be 100 plus 16. And that's 116. For the second standard deviation, we're just going to add another 16. Every time we move away from the mean, we add another 16. So I'm going to plus 16 here. That gives me 132 plus 16 gives me 148. So there are my standard deviations above the mean of 100. And all I did was look and they said start at 100, so 100's in the middle, and then every standard deviation we go over, I'm going to add 16. So 116, 132, and 148. Now we do the same thing in the opposite direction. We're just going to subtract. And I'm not sure if you can, yeah, it looks like you can see that. So 100 minus 16. Well, that gives me 84. Subtract 16. 68. Subtract 16. 52. Okay? So my standard deviations here, I have my mean. This is 1 above, 2 above, 3 above. This is one below, two below, and three below. And all I'm doing is just moving in increments of 16 away from my mean. Um, it's going to be helpful for answering these questions if we label the percentages as well. What's going on with that, uh, that um, 68, 95, 99.7 rule. And that rule told us, I'm gonna make a, to figure out I didn't organize my paper as well as I would have liked. Um, that rule tells us that one standard deviation either above or below the mean. In this area right here, 68 percent of people fall into that category or 68 percent of scores fall into that category. We're not necessarily always talking about people. In this case we're talking about test scores. So the 68 from the 68, 99.7 rule is for things that are between one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above. Um, and then let me get a different color. We need to look at two standard deviations above and below. And I'm going to kind of, this is going to cross into my thing here. 
So this information here, between two standard deviations below and two standard deviations above, that's the 95%. 95% of the scores will fall into that range. And then we've got one more, get another slightly less shocking color so that it doesn't cover everything up. Um, now we're going to look at the three standard deviations. All right. And our rule here says that 99.7% of people fall into, or of scores, fall into that range. The range of three standard deviations from the mean in either direction. Um, but you know that's probably not going to be enough to solve the questions that we're looking for. So it will be really helpful if we can fill in the actual percentages in between the different, the you know, how, what percent of people fall in between 84 and 100? What percent fall between 100 and 116? Let's go ahead and do that. Again, I'm trying to find another marker here. Okay, if 68% fall into this category here, and this is completely symmetrical, then half of the 68 fall here, the other half of the 68 fall here. So there's 34% and 34%. We're just breaking this 68% up into two pieces. So what about here? What falls into these two categories? Um, I mean, I'll write down the answer first, and then I'll explain how you would figure out that answer if you had to get it on your own. Although it's probably helpful at this point to memorize it. There's 13.5% 13.5%. Again, these are going to be the same for the between negative 2 standard deviation and negative 1 standard deviation and 2 and 1 standard deviation. It's going to be the same. And the way we're figuring that out, 95% fall into this big range here, right? But I only want to know the ones that fall into these two categories. So I don't have to count this anymore. So I'm going to get rid of that 68%. So 95 minus 68, 95 minus 68, that gives us 27% to split up between these two. And when we split that 27% in half, so 27 divided by 2, that's going to give us 13.5% for each of these. Okay, so what happens in the ones that are between two and three standard deviations away? Well, those are going to be 2.35%. 2.35%. Okay, same idea. Here we've got 99.7. I'll do that work over here. 99.7. I'm not sure if we can see that. Minus, well, we're only looking at what's in here, so we can subtract that whole 95% that's floating around there. So 95%. And that, if you plug it into your calculator, is going to give you 99.7 minus 95. It's 4.7. All right, but that's 4.7 to split between those two. And when we do 4.7% divided by two, that's going to give us our 2.35%, right? And so we still have the little fringes here, what's happening out here, what percent is, is in those places. I wish I had a sharper marker so that it didn't, uh, didn't bleed quite as much. Um, but the percentages in that range are 0.15%. 0.15%. How do we get that? Well, we get that the same way we got the other ones. This takes us, theoretically, out to 100%. So these are the things that didn't get counted in the other 99.7%. So if I do 100 minus 99.7, I'm going to get 0.3. We'll do that here. 100 minus 99.7. That's 0.3%. And 
And if I divide that 0.3% by 2, I get 0.15%. Okay? And so that's where those numbers came from. So if you get stuck and you can't remember exactly what the percents are, you can use the information in the rule to give that to you. So if 68% fall into this category, then half of them are here, half of them are there. 95% fall into this category, but since we already took care of 68% of them, there's 13.5 left over for here, 13.5 left over for there, and so on. As you move out, you can fill in the, the normal curve. So now we can answer the questions that they're asking here. What percentage scored above 116? Okay, well we look at where 116 is, and then we look at all of the percentages that are above that. So let's go ahead and punch those in. 13.5 plus 2.35 plus 0.15, and that answer is 16%. All I did was find 116 and then add up the percentages above it. So what percent scored below 68? Well, here's 68, and I want everything below 68, so I'm just going to add up those percentages. 2.35 plus 0.15, and that gives me 2.5%. And then finally, um, we're going to ask what falls between. How many scores fall between 68 and 100%? So I'm going to look at 68, and I'm going to look at 100, and I'm just going to add up the percentages that are in between them. So that's going to be 13.5 plus 34, which gives us 47.5%. Uh, Okay, so the trick here, really, to be able to answer to be able to answer a question like this, is going to be knowing how to use these numbers and these numbers to fill out this normal curve. And remember that the mean is going to be right in the middle, and that's the value that they gave us here. That's why I put the 100 there. The mean doesn't have to be 100. It depends on the data set. The mean could be 17,000. It could be 25,000. But whatever the number they give you for the mean is what goes in the middle. Standard deviation tells you that every time you move a standard deviation away from the mean, you're going to move 16. So in this case, when I went to my first standard deviation, I added 16. When I went to my second standard deviation, I added another 16. When I went to my third standard deviation, I added another 16. And when I worked in the opposite direction, instead of adding, I subtracted 16. And that gives us these percentages, or these, uh, these scores that are standard deviations away from the mean. Then we use the 68, 95, 97 rule to fill in our percentages, and that allows us to answer the questions that are being asked about this data set. And so that is using the 68, 95, 99.7 rule to label a normal curve and answer questions about a set of data.